Hi, I'm Lockie from Classic Auto Fabrications and in this short video I'm going to show you how to extract a bolt out of a, a frozen thread um, quickly, simply and easily. Uh, a gen generally people try to use a, an easy out to get broken studs and bolts out of um, rusted out threads um, by drilling and inserting an easy out and, and then unwinding it. 70% uh, of the time this just doesn't work. You, ought, you generally try to break the easy out off out in the hole and you end up with a giant mess. Um, with this technique that I'm about to show you, uh, it's quick, simple and easy and it works on any material, be it mold steel, stainless, aluminium, brass, copper and even titanium. Uh, it, doesn't, it takes a little bit of skill but it's not very difficult at all. Uh, um, and uh, what we're going to do now is go through the equipment that, we, that you need to uh, perform this task. Uh, first off, we are, we've obviously got a TIG welder. Uh, this is, you can, we're only running up to about 50 amps, so even a small 150 amp DC TIG welder is uh, more than sufficient to do this job. Uh, obviously set up in DC mode for mild steel and AC for aluminium, brass, copper, etc. Uh, the second item we've got here is a squeezy bottle of water with a hole poked in the end of it so we get a bit of a squirting action happening. That's just an old iced coffee bottle. Pretty straightforward. And the last item, of course, is a good quality pair of vice or mole grips. Um, that's all you need. These are the three items that we're going to use. And that's all you need to do this operator. Uh, so we're going to get cracking now. Uh, first couple of tips is um, with your body help, make sure you've got a nice clean lens or you've changed the lenses in the body help because you need uh, good visibility to perform this operation. So what we're going to do, we're going to get cracking now, we're going to show you how to do it. I'll just move away, whoops, a touch. Careful now. Yeah. Okay, what we're going to do now, if you want to zoom in now, we want to have the TIG electrode sticking out only two to three mil, not a lot, but it does depend on personal preference. And what we're going to do is we're going to heat the very centre of the broken bolt. And we want to try and push as much heat through the bolt to the other side, if you can see the other side, as possible. This is going to have the effect of breaking the, the corrosion down and, and, and freeing up the bolt itself. So with everything running as as it should. We're going to start that by putting some heat in the middle of the stud. Don't be afraid to back off if it starts getting too hot and starts running away from you. Okay, so now we've got plenty of heat through the back of this to the very end of the stud and we're going to let that cool briefly before we continue with the next phase of this operation. Okay, uh, with it, now that we've heated the stud all the way through and we've broken down the corrosion, we're now going to add some filler rod to the end of the stud. So we're going to heat it up make the end of the bolt molten, then introduce the filler rod and then we're going to back off the filler, we're going to add one dot and then back off and then back the heat off. And then we're going to let the, 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 the molten pull cool slightly while it's still cherry red and then we're going to repeat the process again and build it up. And the goal is to build up a, a, a lump on the end of the stud or broken bolt about 10 mil, 10 mil or half an inch long. So we're going to perform that operation now. Okay, what, if you come in now yes, and take a, a view of this, what we've added, we've added a couple of two to three mil of material mm. by the filler rod onto the end of the stud. You won't so get a very good picture because no, it's a bit too right. close. That's oh, right. that's a good picture, that'll do. 
So there we go. So you can see a bit of a knob on the end of it. Uh, that's not quite long enough yet. We really want it out here to where my, my filler rod's pointing, and we want to make it that long so we can then get the uh, vice grip to continue on there. Okay, while this is still hot, we're going to get our squirty bottle and we're going to quench the, the stud now or the broken air, the broken bolt off. And we want it to be fairly liberal with the water. You will notice at this point that I'm actually not using any penetrating fluid. Penetrating fluid, due to the nature of it, will actually evaporate before it actually uh, gets to the stud. Water has a better effect of, of um, by capillary action wicking its way through the through the through the nut itself in between the two and this will also act as a type of lubricant. Don't be shy with the water, it can all be cleaned up later. Okay, now that we've got that done, um, we've quenched it down and it's now nice and cold. So we're giving it a few minutes to cool down. Um, best go grab a drink before, while you're while you letting it cool down completely. You want, do want it cold, you don't want it hot. Anyway, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to get our trusty vice grips or mole grips, depending on what country you're from. So make sure they're up tight, like that. And then we're just going to gently rock it backwards and forwards. And with any luck, yep, we've got some movement, some freedom in there. Uh, on, 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 on Z cars, Dats and Z cars, um, they're notorious for breaking studs off in the guard mounting points on the side. So uh, this is, and they always seem to break off flush. So this is an excellent technique for freeing them up. So you notice that's quite free now. So we're going to undo that, and we're going to rotate it, and we're going to see if we can get a half rotation out of it. Yeah, we can. Um, do take your time with this procedure because this is the bit that makes it all work. What's actually going to happen now is because the rust has has, uh, has let go of it, the bolt will actually recut the thread of the nut on its way out. So you actually don't have to re-tap it either if you don't want to. By all means, if you feel the need to, you can certainly do that. So anyway, now that we've got something to grip onto, we're just, we're just going to keep rotating it. And now that it's free enough, I can actually make a full rotation with the vice grips. If you don't get to this stage straight, straight, straight away, simply sit there rocking it backwards and forwards. It becomes more of a problem on larger bolts where you have to do that, but you just got to sit there and keep breaking the what's left of the rust and corrosion away, and you will eventually be able to get a full turn out of it and then go back like you're tapping a thread. So just keep going. So now we're, uh, we're extracting the bolt, and it's coming up pretty easily. Nearly there. And there we go. One perfectly extracted bolt. No mess, no fuss, no drilling, no easy outs. Uh, this technique was shown to me by a very clever engine builder and engineer um, some time ago, and uh, it has proven to be the most effective way of removing any broken stud or bolt. Uh, this is actually highly effective if you've got a broken exhaust stud in an aluminium head. Even if it's buried 10 to 15 mil down inside the hole, you, um, with a bit of extra stick out on TIG toys you can, and, and, and a steady hand, you can actually use the same technique to build up a bit enough of a lump on the end of the broken stud to get a vice grips on it and to undo it. Uh, this works for absolutely any situation, bar the fact that if you've got a bolt that's very long or that's in a very uh, that's broken off a long way inside a hole, this technique, with a little bit of patience and time, does work 100% of the time without the need for a breaking an easy out or anything else like without using an easy out or anything else like that. So there we go. Hope this has been useful um, and yeah, good luck in extracting your bolts.